you know, you've written this, you've revised this book. Oh, yeah, Just Visiting This Planet. Yeah, I wrote a, a column, a question and an answer column for like 10 years, 15 years, where people just asked me questions from the public. And I had a pen name called Merlin. And Merlin was friends with, with Newton and Galileo and Marie Curie and all these people. So if you ask Merlin, dear Merlin, I don't quite understand gravity. Merlin would say, oh, Merlin had a conversation with Isaac Newton in his backyard. And here's how he answers that. I think in the book you talk about a golf ball sized black hole would weigh more than Earth and swallow it whole, leaving behind something the size of a lime. Yeah, slightly bigger, right. What is, uh, you've been asked this so many times, but I still don't know the answer. What is a black hole? And how do we even know if they're real, if no one's ever been to one? Well, you can know things without visiting them. I mean, that's the methods and tools and machines of science are remarkable in their ability to learn something without actually having to see it with your eyes or hear it with your ears or to touch it with your fingers. We have, in fact, science didn't take off until these machines became a fundamental part of how we investigated the world, replacing our five senses. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing more feeble in this world than you thinking you understand reality through your five senses. That, that, I don't want to call it feeble, I would call it error prone error prone. Remember I told you about escape velocity of Earth? Yeah. Do you remember what I, the value I said it was? Seven miles per minute. Paid attention. Per minute. Per second. Per second. That's <laughs> very fast. Seven miles per So the adage, what goes up must come down, mm -hmm. it's not true. It's true for almost anything you would experience, but you can launch something at seven miles per second, it'll never ever come back. That's the escape velocity for Earth. Okay. If Earth had more mass and the gravity were stronger, mm -hmm. the escape velocity is higher. That would make sense because yeah. there's more gravity that you have to escape. Mm -hmm. Let's keep up that exercise. Cram in more and more mass. Just keep doing that. Escape velocity keeps going up. Eventually, the escape velocity hits the speed of light. At that point, light can't even escape. Light is the fastest thing in the universe. If light can't escape, if you fall in, you don't escape either. There's no better description of a hole than that. And worse yet, it's a hole in any direction you approach it. Not just a hole in the street or in the floor. It's a three-dimensional hole. And how do we know it's there? Because it distorts the fabric of space and time around it. We see galaxies behind concentrations of matter, black holes, and the shape of the galaxy is distorted. Because Einstein tells us, tells us that gravity distorts the fabric of space and time. So that's one way we discover black holes. Another way is most stars in the night sky are binary and multiple star systems, most of them. You can't see it because you just have human vision. You whip out a telescope, you see, oh my gosh, there are two stars, not just one. Mm. If there's a pair of stars and one of them becomes a black hole, and this one ages, it expands, and some of its material spills onto and orbits around the event horizon of the black hole. This swirling material gets hotter and hotter and hotter, and it radiates X-rays and ultraviolet. We have X-ray and ultraviolet telescopes that see every one of these in the night sky. They're all black holes. And it's created from an explosion? Uh, there's a, a star that wants to explode, but it has so much mass, the explosion doesn't overcome the gravity, and the star <laughs> collapses down on itself to make a black hole. There's one way to make a black hole. So our sun, when that runs no, it's up. not going to become black hole. It's pretty wimpy in that department. It'll still kill us, but for different reasons. <laughs> so the mass of the object is so big that it can't actually explode because the gravitational pull Correct. inwards is so strong. Correct. That's above a certain threshold. Within there, there's the stars that the explosion is greater than what the gravity can contain, and it makes a supernova, and those are the stars that spread heavy elements across the galaxy, enabling us to even exist. So I'm gonna read this again. A golf ball-sized black hole would weigh more than Earth and swallow it whole, leaving behind something the size of a lime. Yeah, so when black holes eat, they get bigger. So a lime is bigger than a golf ball but not by very much. We can calculate what the size is. 
Where would everything go? <laughs> it's in there. It's compressed down inside the hole. And if I was, and everything near it's going to get pulled in there as well. Uh, if it comes too close, right? If it comes too close, yeah. You can stay. You can keep your distance. Black holes don't. They're not giant sucking devices. I mean, if you keep your distance, you're, if the sun became a black hole right now, we would still orbit it. The gravity we feel at our distance is no different. You say that if the sun suddenly shut off, we'd freeze at minus 462 Fahrenheit, which is the background temperature of the universe. Yes. Once the stored energy ran out. Yeah. Once the stored energy wear ran out. Well, in this, in the, well, so there's the sun's energy mm -hmm. if the sun blotted out, but Earth has energy inside of itself as well. This is what gives us volcanoes and continental drift and all the rest of this. So if you don't have a sun, you want to live near a volcano or something that is a source of energy for you. And then you'll live on Earth until the Earth's energy died out. Ideally, by then, you just go to another planet. I mean, why not? How long has our sun got left? About another 5 billion years. How would we know? It's a good question. That's a the product of 20th century modern astrophysics. That was, then it was modern. I think of it as modern. Where you say, what kind of star is this? And you look around the universe for other stars that are just like it. And then you see those stars in their stages of evolution, stars being born, living out their lives, and dying. And the star changes its properties from birth to death. And so you can line up what, where the sun is in that chart. And then, plus, we know how old Earth is. So we can directly measure the age of the Earth. And so there's no reason to think that Earth did not form at the same time the sun did. Another really um, fascinating one was, every breath you take contains molecules once inhaled by every human in history. Yep. That can't be true. <laughs> Chat GPT it. <laughs> no, so here it is. You ready? Yeah. There are more molecules of air in a single breath of air than there are breaths of air in Earth's entire atmosphere. So, if you breathe in and then breathe out, there's enough molecules that you breathed out to populate every breath that anyone will ever again take on this Earth. And air mixes rather quickly. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, you, so it has to mix. It's not immediately. Give it some time. But you give it some time. There are molecules that went in and out of your lungs that are in China being breathed by people there uh, when enough time has elapsed. You can calculate that. It might, it's years, 10 years, something like that. There's tremendous mixing of air. So how's that for feeling kinship with others? Same with water. You drink a water. There are more molecules of water in a glass of water. This is a mug of water. Then there are mugs of water in all the world's oceans. So you drink a mug of water, and then it comes out of you in any one of a half dozen different ways. There's enough molecules to scatter into every other mug of water in the world. So if someone gets a mug of water, your molecules will be in. plenty more, plenty of molecules to go. So if I do a big, big inhale, I'm also I'm inhaling air that contains molecules that all of my living relatives once inhaled. Yes, and go further back. Jesus inhaled them. <sighs> Muhammad. And with every breath. Yes, every breath. This is the, the 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 oneness of it all. That's why it's a beautiful thing. Astrophysics 